so i was talking about thousand of solutions multi component solutions so multi component solutions means it is basically a mixture of multiple components and the mixture gives rise to a homogeneous non reacting uh, uh, it's a homogeneous non reactive mixture of components where you cannot distinguish one component from the other and they form a solution okay so that is the solution that we define and we'll continue with that now uh, as you uh, know a little bit of reprise so if you think of z which is an extensive thermodynamic parameter that depends on the extensive thermodynamic parameter it's a function of z can be a function of temperature pressure and more number of different components like component 1 component 2 and components is up to c and c n1 is the number of moles of component 1 n2 is the number of moles of component 2 nc is the number of moles of component c then basically you have total number of moles if you look at total number of moles n equals to summation equal to 1 to n equal to 1 to c n i right so zm is nothing but which is a zm or zm is a molar thermodynamic property and molar thermodynamic property means thermodynamic property per mole right it is per mole it's an intensive quantity so it will be defined as zm or zm equal to z by okay now let us look at the partial molar property i have already defined right in the last classes i have already defined so zk bar so zk bar is that the partial derivative of z with respect to nk that is uh, with respect to species k the concentration of species k in terms of mole number so del z del nk that means i want to look at the change in the extensive property z if i add or remove some amount of k component right one of the components is k component means the component k so i am looking at Z, zk bar means partial molar property of or of component in the solution so remember when i am talking about partial molar property i am already considering a mixture or a solution right i have considered a mixture i want to look at con contribution of component k to the extensive property so zk bar is defined as the partial derivative of the partial derivative of z this is the property with respect to nk which is the mole number of species k or component k keeping temperature pressure and other species small numbers that is j j are the other species and j j not equal to k see j not equal to k and this is the other species small numbers have kept constant so only mole number that i am changing or varying is the mole number of component k and as a result i want to see the variation in z means variation in the extensive parameter remember i am looking at the variation in the extensive parameter not the variation in the molar Uh, parameter right i am not looking at the molar thermodynamic property but i am looking at so that is the definition of partial molar property so, see remember partial molar property is always defined with respect to uh, when i express it in terms of partial derivative then it is res with respect uh, so the, the the quantity that i am means basically the the quantity the numerator is basically the extensive thermodynamic property right it is the extensive thermodynamic property so this is the partial derivative of the extensive thermodynamic property with respect to the mole number of component k keeping temperature pressure and mole number of all other components fixed right keeping mole number of all other components fixed temperature fixed pressure fixed we want to see the so we want to see how the extensive property varies as a function of variation in the mole number of component k Change in mole number of component. Now, if that if that is so, 
z being an extensive property right z is an extensive property so at a given temperature and pressure if i write at a given temperature say at a given temperature t and at a given pressure at a given pressure p Z, there is extensive property. This extensive property is a summation of the partial molar properties of the components K, where K can vary from 1 to C, right? So, this is a sum of the partial molar properties multiplied with the or weighted with the mole number of each component. So, basically, this is nothing but if I expand Z equal to n1 z1 bar plus n2 z2 bar plus so this zk bar or z1 bar z1 bar is the partial molar property associated with component 1 or partial molar contribution of component 1 to the solution okay and this partial molar the, the partial molar property of component 1 or with component 1 in the solution and the solution has an overall property or an extensive property z right now if that is so i have also defined the gives duham relation right G gives duham relation which is basically so i did it for um, uh, gives free energy i showed it for uh, molar volume uh, i showed it for the total volume um, so if you look at um, yeah, any any extensive property z then it is n k d z k bar equal to 0. So, basically n k d z k bar again summation from k equal to 1 to c. Okay. So, if you have repeated indices remember that if you have repeated indices we can also use a Einstein summation convention. So, basically this means there is always a sum of the repeated indices and the repeated index is k and k denotes the component here k denotes the component k here so number of components here is c and the components are denoted by 1 2 3 up to c okay so now if you look at dz so if you look at dz dz is n1 dz1 bar plus n2 dz2 bar plus also you will have now this this part you have to remember this is something you have this one and you also have you also have z1 bar dn1 plus z2 bar right dn2 plus zc bar d and c right so you have this term plus you have another term which is k equal to 1 to c this will be z k bar d and now according to gives to him according to gives to him this term n k d z k bar equal to zero right so n1 d z1 bar plus n2 d z2 bar plus n c uh, d z c bar all of these are zero so this term goes to zero right so this term goes to zero so this will be 0 according to Gibbs to him. But what is remaining then is this term. Right? And this is the Euler relation. You see z equals to z equals to n1 z1 bar n1 z1 bar plus n2 z2 bar plus nk zk bar. Or I can write this as 
summation k equal to 1 to c n k z k bar. See, this is the Euler relation, right? This is Euler equation or Euler relation. Right? For example, g equals to h minus ds plus mu i ni. Now, if you think of a, a constant pressure and a temperature, then g you can basically write as um, mu i ni, right? Mu i ni, where mu i is the uh, partial molar free energy of component i or chemical potential of component i. As I told you previously, chemical potential of a component basically is nothing but the partial molar free energy of that component in a solution right now what types of solutions are possible solid in liquid solid in solid liquid in solid mixture of gases so any type of solution is possible now comes an interesting part okay which is basically again i am reprising i have already defined it previously but please listen because this part is very very important when you want to understand solutions or thermodynamics of solutions, right? When you want to understand thermodynamics of solutions, you do have to remember the gives to him relation, okay, which is n k d z k bar. So basically, what it tells is that this d z k bar means if you have a partial molar property, if you do a differential of that partial molar property and weight it with the mole number, then basically the sum of these will always go to zero. That's the gives to him relation, right? And also as a result, we can tell from this equation, means that this is the equation, this is the Euler equation, from this equation and this equation, we can tell dz is nothing but sum for all components, zk bar, that is the partial normal property, times the differential of the mole number, right? The differential of the total differential of the mole number, d and k, right? Now, look at this, say for example, you have these components, you have these components like 1, 2 and 3. You are adding them. Once you add them, you get this guy, which is basically a mixture or a, if you, it's a homogeneous mixture, then it becomes a solution. So 1 plus 2 plus 3. So, all these components are true. Right? So, this is component 1, this is component 2, and this is component 3. Right? Now, if that is so, the, the, the property that it had is Z10. And the property here would be Z20. And here it is Z30. Now, if it's a three component system, then Z0 in this case equal to z10 plus z20 plus z30. See, this is before mixing. See, these are before mixing. We put uh, put them together. So, before mixing, the total the, 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 uh, z0 is basically, now remember, z10 is basically molar property or com property of component k so z10 is molar property or property of component 1 per mole before mixing so this is property of component 1 per mole or molar property of component 1 before Mixing before mixing means it is in the the component is in the pure state, right? It's a pure component. So then, so basically, Z K zero is property of component K per mole before mixing in the pure or in the reference or in the standard state. Okay, when you have a superscript of zero, I am denoting what is called a standard state. Now, if I have this standard state and then the delta Z max, okay, is equal to so delta Z max is basically the change in the molar property or relative uh, uh, change in the property change in the property so you can call it like change in property due to mixing change in property due to mixing is delta so that's why there is a delta sign so it is change in property due to mixing 
so that is equal to z solution z of the solution minus z0 where z0 is the sum of the sum of the molar properties of pure components weighted by the mole number sum of the molar properties of pure components weighted by the mole number if you sum it up then what you get is z0 and z0 is an extensive property but that's an extensive property of the of the mixture uh, when we are take uh, we when we are not taking into account any mixing so it is like z0 is the sum of properties of pure components uh, 1 2 3 and so on and uh, weighted by weighted by the mole number of each component right so that is z0 now z solution is after mixing z solution comes so this is after mixing all components and this is before mixing right this is before mixing this is after mixing now once you have after mixing minus before mixing this is the change right change in the property due to mixing so change in property change in property z extensive property z due to mixing So, change in J due to mixing is basically the extensive property of the solution that is after mixing minus the extensive property of all the pure components, uh, pure components weighted by the mole number of each component because these are the components, these are the boxes that you are mixing or these are the, these are the containers that you are mixing. So, one basically say for example, one the number of components is N. The mole number is n1, for 2 it is n2, for 3 it is n3. So n3 of z03 is coming, n2 of z02 is coming, n1 of z01 is coming and they give us 1, 2 and 3. But however, the atoms of or molecules of 1, 2 and 3 will mix, right? The atoms molecules will mix to form a mixture and that mixture, uh, if the homogeneous mixture is nothing but the solution. Now, this solution will form and solution will have some property, right, which is Z solution. And this is before mixing. So, the difference between them is the change due to mixing, right. Now, Z0 equals to this sum, right, sum of NK, ZK0, where ZK0 is the property, molar property of the pure component K, right, and molar property of pure component K and nk is the mole number of component k and z solution when i am writing this also can be expressed as a summation but the summation is over now nk times zk bar zk bar is the partial molar contribution of component k to the overall property of the solution partial molar property of component k or, uh, or contribution of component k to the overall molar property of the solution and it is weighted by again the mole number of that component right and summed over all components so that z solution is nothing but z for us right that's the z that you measure for a solution and z minus z0 gives me delta z so delta z mix as you can see here is again zk bar zk bar is the partial molar property of component k minus again this is a partial molar property and this is the molar property of the pure component k right the difference between them is multiplied or weighted by nk gives me that delta z mix or oh, summed over all components it gives me the delta z mix or delta z mix so, if I look at delta zk bar, that is for each component. So, for each component. So, here for example, I am considering only component k. I can substitute k by 1, 2, 3 and so on. So, or a, b, c and so on. So, delta zk bar is the chain or this is called relative. This is called relative partial molar property of component k 
okay or change in partial moral property of compound k due to mixing due to mixing so delta z k bar is basically z k bar minus z k zero again this is nothing but the pure slab standard now therefore delta z mix e which is basically sum of this which is delta z k bar so if you can see here i am having this guy delta z k bar and instead of this i am writing this directly as delta z k bar so delta z mix is delta z k bar multiplied by n k and summed over all components now if i want to do an exact differential if i want to find the differential of that so d delta z mix equals to k equal to 1 to c delta z k bar d n k why because since since n k d delta z k bar will be equal to 0 because of again gives to him relation So as you can see, Gibbs Dunn equation is not only valid for the partial molar property mu, uh, 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 the, the, the partial molar property, but also for the relative partial molar property, that is the delta mu, right? It is, uh, the, or the relative partial molar, molar property is the difference in the partial molar property after mixing, um, difference of partial from uh, that before mixing, right? This is the partial molar property before mixing this is the partial molar property before mixing this partial molar property after mixing the difference between them gives me the relative partial molar property of component k right and n so basically if i extend gives to a relation then i can write n k d delta z k bar equal to zero now if it is so as we know that the molar property z m equal to z by n where n is the total number of moles right and dzm is z i bar d x i now why why is d x i because dz so as you see dz equals to z1 bar dn1 plus z2 bar dn2 now right so now i am dividing i am dividing so d z by n equal to z1 bar d n1 by n plus which is n1 by n is nothing but x1 so this will become so this becomes the the the, the dz by n or dz m is equal to this right so this is nothing but z1 bar dx1 right so zy bar dxi is dzm right so that we know right so now it has become xi remember this has become mole fraction and previously it was mole number mole number is an extensive property but mole fraction which is the ratio of ni and n right n is a total mole number total mole uh, total number of moles of all components in the mixture on the solution and ni is the mole number of component i so xi is a ratio of these and so xi is an intensive property and we also know gives to n for example was n d mu so n i d mu y equal to 0 so we had n i d mu y summation over i equal to 1 to c equal to 0 now if i again divide by n right we will get xi d mu y equal to 0 or xi d let me call it here dzi bar 
So xi dz by r equal to 0 is the gives you an equation, but using molar, molar, mole fraction, right. So, we are looking at mole fraction. So, this is again a gives you an equation. This is gives you an equation, but uses mole fraction instead of mole number, right. So, and again Zm can be written as Zk bar. So, you have n1 Z1 bar plus n2 Z2 bar plus so on and if I divide by n again, so if I divide, so Z equals to this, right, Z equals to n1 uh, Z1 bar n1 plus Z2 bar. So, if I take binary say n2, now n1 plus n2 to n. So, Zm which is equal to Z by n equal to Z1 bar. See, it is already partial molar property, right? It is partial molar per mole, right? And this will be n1 by n, which is basically x plus. This will be Z2 bar, right? These are very, very important relations, okay? When we talk about molar free energy, right? We have already shown it in the tangent construction. I am just reprising so that you are clear with all these important concepts, okay. Now, as you can see that if we do it for the change in the molar free energy, right, we, we looked at our molar property, we looked at change in property, right, due to mixing, change in the total property or change in the extensive property mixing is given by d delta z. So, delta z, sorry, just given by delta z. So, delta z is the change in the extensive property okay due to mixing so therefore just taking that q we can also write something called delta z m which is change in molar property due to mixing. Okay, so if you do that, then the Gibbs-Jones relation you can see here d delta z m x equals to k equal to one to c delta z k bar d x k instead of instead of writing d n k that we wrote previously. Now you can use d x k, right? And d x k basically basically means uh, uh, it is the differential of the mole fraction of the composition of component k in terms of mole fraction. So, delta z m mix for example is delta z k bar x k, right? And therefore, gives to m also we can write as x k times d delta z k bar which is equal to 0. So, n 1 d mu 1 equal to 0, n 1 d mu 1 plus n 2 d mu 2 equal to 0 is equivalent to x 1 d mu 1 plus x 2 d mu 2 equal to 0. Okay, so delta Z M mix, if I call it as delta Z M, I just denote it as delta Z M for convenience, otherwise you have to always put a comma and all. So basically, if that is so, so this is the overall, right? Now, but for each of these, what about delta Z1 bar? The delta Z1 bar is the relative partial molar property of component 1, which is again D delta Z, Dn1 and keeping T, P and N, K, which is not equal to one constant. So, delta Z1 bar can be written as, so now you can see you have already done this, okay, this can be written as delta Z M plus 1 minus X M, uh, 1 minus X1, D delta Z M, D X1, right? How does it uh, uh, work? You please refer to the last uh, weeks class and then you can easily find it. It is very important. Uh, otherwise, you can also do this way like this and delta z, you can write this way like delta z equals to n delta z m and then you can carry out the partial derivative where you will use a chain rule. Then basically what you will get and this is something that I have shown in the previous class 
is this plus this, right? So delta Z M plus one minus X one D delta Z M D X one. Now, if you look at this, delta Z two bar also can be written as delta Z M plus one minus X two D delta Z M D X two, right? So if that is so, you can see that D delta Z M D delta Z M D X two is equal to minus D delta Z M D X one. Right? Why? Because x1 plus x2 equals to 1, so dx2 equals to minus dx1. Right? So d delta z m dx1 or d delta z m dx2, d delta z m dx2 equal to minus d delta z m dx1. Another important thing that I want to mention is that all the partial moral properties can also be written using the same. Uh, um, definitions of thermodynamic potentials that we have derived previously, right? For the, so basically, this is the partial molar enthalpy. So if you look at the partial molar enthalpy of component K, which is equal to the partial molar internal energy of component K plus P times partial molar volume of component K. Similarly, the Helmholtz free energy F K, right? F uh, the partial molar Helmholtz free energy of component K equals to partial molar internal energy of component K minus T times partial molar entropy of component K. Similarly, we can write G K bar, which is nothing but mu K, which is nothing but the chemical potential of component K, which is equal to H K bar. Again, H K bar is a partial molar enthalpy of component K and S K bar is partial molar entropy of component Right, Sim and we can also write something like Maxwell's relations for these partial molar quantities. All of these are valid. So this is one Maxwell relation, right, which is basically minus del S K bar del P, right, del S K bar del P equals to del V K bar del T at fixed pressure and mole number. If the mole numbers are fixed. And pressure is fixed, and here it is temperature and mole number. So del S K del P minus del S K bar del P equals to del V K bar del T. This comes from the equality of the second derivatives. Okay, so so one thing you have to understand is that we define something called act. Activity. Instead of so, in, instead of the mole fraction of components in the solution, we define something called activity of component K in solution. Okay, and we generally never determine the chemical potential of components in a solution. We generally determine something called activity. So, activity of components in a solution somehow should be related to the chemical potential. But remember. This is what we determine experimentally. We determine activity. We do not determine chemical potential. Now look at this relation. Mu k minus mu k zero equals delta mu k equals to R T L N A K. Okay, this is the definition of activity. You might have recognized this equation. This is equation was written as mu k equal to mu k zero plus sorry minus. Right, so it was previously now it is instead of x k. So here I have given x k mu k equals to mu k zero. Mu k zero is the chemical potential of component k in the pure form or in the standard form plus r. Times R is the universal gas constant times times T times uh, logarithm of uh, ln of x k, right? So something like this, right? Instead of x k, we will now use something called a k because we can directly determine activity, but we cannot directly determine chemical potential, right? Chemical potential is basically a partial molar free energy, and as with different types of energies that we have experienced, energies cannot be evaluated directly, but activity can be determined. 
okay so activity of component k in the solution is nothing but the apparent concentration apparent concentration so as i told you activity is basically related to the composition of the component in a solution so activity if you look at the definition yeah a k equals to gamma k x k is basically this gamma k term which is an activity coefficient that comes in and this 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 x k is nothing but the actual composition of component k in the solution so as you can see for different gamma k's other than one a k is related to x k but x a k gives the apparent concentration a k gives the so basically what i want to say is that a k gives the apparent it's a measure of apparent concentration of component k in the solution okay and a k equals to gamma k times x k okay and gamma k is again written as activity coefficient of component k when gamma k equal to 1 as i told you when gamma k equal to 1 a k and x k are same right gamma k to 1 basically means a k equal to x k and activity of component k is concentration is basically the apparent apparent so remember to use about apparent concentration of component k in the solution that is a k now as you know a k equals to gamma k x k and mu k I can write as mu k 0 plus rt ln a k and that is basically nothing but mu k 0 plus rt ln gamma k x k. Now if gamma k is greater than 1, obviously if gamma k is greater than 1 then this can be written as, by the way, this can be written as mu k 0 plus rt ln x k plus R T L N gamma K. Now this is the part you can see that comes as excess. So comp now this part if gamma K for example is greater than 1 this part will be positive right if gamma K is greater than 1. So this part is positive activity which is X K times gamma K activity becomes greater than the mole fraction of component k and component k behaves as if the concentration of it of its its concentration is more than its actual concentration x k so as if its concentration is more than its actual concentration which is nothing but x k so that is how we define activity of a component in a solution similarly if gamma k is less than 1 then rt ln gamma k is going to be negative right if gamma k is less than 1. So a k becomes less than x k and in that case the apparent concentration of component k is less than its actual concentration right. So now we can also look at the mixture of pure components uh, various pure components and that mixture of pure components means you have just put them together you have just added them together they are not yet mixing right they have just been added together and these are like pure components from 1 to um, n say for example from 1 to n you have um, n pure components or you can think of instead of making any confusion you can tell up to x uh, c So x1 mu 1 0, x2 mu 2 0 and you have this term. So mu 0 basically is what I am trying to say. So this is xc and this is mu c 0 at a constant temperature and pressure. Okay. 
So let me just use the same color. So this becomes x c no c zero at the same temperature and pressure, right? So this is the mixture of pure components. So this is the mixture of pure components up to x c. Okay, where mu i zero, mu i zero or mu k zero is the chemical potential of pure component i in at temperature and pressure and that is nothing but the stand the, the reference or uh, you can think of like a pure the it's it's it's, it's like the partial molar gives free energy of uh, partial molar gives free energy of component one in the pure form which is nothing but the molar is nothing but the molar of component one, right? So now if you look at condensed mixture, that is condensed mixture means mixture of liquids or mixture of solids. In general, for mixture of liquids or mixture of solids, we consider the PV work and we have also already seen some examples of PV work is negligent. So basically we keep P equals to one bar or one push there on only when the uh, uh, the P is of the order of some few kilobars uh, or some giga uh, like 10 gigapascals or more that we have also shown. You will see that in such cases, PV work becomes important for the condensed mixture. So if it's a condensed mixture of pure components, so basically you have a mixture of pure components, say for example, copper and nickel, you have mixed together and you have formed a solution, a solid solution. Or you have taken, say, some, 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 um, acetone and water and you have formed a solution or, uh, or, or some ethanol and water and you form the solution. So in such a case, the, 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 the pressure is assumed to be one bar or one atmosphere and until very high pressure is applied. This is because in such a case, the PV work will be really, really negligible. Right? If it's a solid, 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 liquid, liquid, solid type of or liquid, liquid type of mixture. So in that case, you have to remember that we have to keep pressure fixed at one bar or one atmosphere um, and we have to basically once you keep pressure fixed uh, once you keep pressure fixed you can define properties molar properties or partial molar properties of a um, partial molar properties of the components in terms of only temperature because pressure is fixed Right for condensed mixture, we are taking the pressure fixed. So basically, as you see, that you can express the 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 the, the molar free energy in terms of partial molar uh, free energies or chemical potentials. Again, here we are telling by if I take a binary mixture and before mixing, this is before mixing. has started because the mixing process is what you have collection of a atoms which is basically your uh, species a and you have collection of b atoms your species b you put them together unless the mix unless the mix they are still in their pure form the blocks are in their pure form right they have to mix and once they mix then basically you have formed a solution before that it is like you have placed one block of a atoms one block of b atoms okay and so so basically, if you look at the molar free energy as a function of temperature and so again, pressure is fixed. Remember, for one phases, because pressure does not do much, okay, the PV work is negligible. Okay, so basically GM is a function, uh, is equals to, so GM is basically nothing but mu zero and mu zero is nothing but the, uh, the, 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 molar partial molar grease free energy or chemical potential in the standard state which is equals to x a mu is zero plus x b mu v zero right x a mu is zero plus x b mu v zero now as you can see here you have this mu is zero you have this mu v zero there is nothing much has changed so this point is mu is zero and this point is mu is zero Okay, so in the next class, I'll start from here and I'll tell how activity modifies the property of the solution.
okay how this definition or how all this that you have learned basically why this before mixing and after mixing although i have given up uh, an a uh, small atomistic picture before mixing and after mixing how does this property how does this properties get modified is what i'll do in the next lecture thank you thanks so much for